The overall picture is that over the last decades, the AMOC has been in a very weak state compared to the last nearly 2,000 years. The climate of planet Earth is an extraordinarily complex system of interconnected forces. The sun is the main driver of this and its intensity affects global winds, precipitation patterns and ocean circulation. Massive ocean currents such as the Gulf Stream move heat from one part of the planet to the other and in part helps to give Western Europe its mild winter climate. Climate change is already having a visible effect on the world and scientists are starting to build a clearer picture of what happens when certain climate components near their tipping point. Dr. Levka Caesar is part of an international team from the UK, Ireland and Germany that are looking at one of the largest ocean currents known as the AMOC. AMOC, or short AMOC, is the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation. And it is basically defined by an overturning of water masses surface flow or a near surface flow of warm and saline water masses that go from the low latitudes towards the North Atlantic and there these water masses sink and we have a colder return flow at depth. I'm visualizing a complex system of cogs and gears and, and the AMOC seems to be quite a large cog in this machine. I mean, how influential is it globally? The AMOC is basically the bridge between the two hemispheres because it's actually transporting heat from the southern towards the northern hemisphere. And this exchange of warm and cold water leads to a large heat transport by the AMOC that can be as large as about 1.3 petawatts, which is about the energy produced by a million medium-sized nuclear power plants. This energy is at some point released to the atmosphere and that is how the AMOC influences our climate. And so why has it been brought to your attention? Why are you doing research on it now? We know that in principle it is possible for the AMOC to stop or even reverse direction. Climate data points towards the fact that this has happened in the past and so for us it's of course to important to know, can this happen again? And can it even happen within our lifetime? In 2004, the RAPID programme was started by the researchers worried about rapid climate change. A series of moorings were installed between the Bahamas and the Canary Islands. Each mooring stretches from the seabed to the ocean surface and has up to 270 instruments measuring the temperature, salinity and depth at which the observations are made. The tallest mooring is 5,150 metres high, 17 times the Eiffel Tower. These provide detailed measurements of ocean currents from which scientists can build a picture of the AMOX activity. For data prior to 2004, Dr. Caesar and her team had to be more creative, using data gathered from natural environmental archives, such as sediment and ice and coral, as well as from historical data, such as ship logs. The ocean sediment acts kind of like a memory. All the different plants and animals that die in the ocean, they would sink to the ground and then they would just form layer after layer and giving us a record of time going back. We looked at data that can go back over a thousand years, even nearly 2,000 years, and therefore kind of record the water temperatures and the flows that have been there. Looking at these paleoclimatic records led to some uncomfortable conclusions. We could see that for most of the time, the AMOC has been very stable with some natural variability, but overall very stable. And only in the midst or towards the end of the 19th century, the AMOC started to weaken and a more rapid decline that followed in the 20th century. The overall picture is that over the last decades, the AMOC has been in a very weak state compared to the last nearly 2,000 years. What do you think is driving this change? Under global warming, we have a lot of freshwater flux into the subpolar North Atlantic because of the melting of the Arctic sea ice and the Greenland ice sheet. 
and we also have this warming of the surface waters and both fresher water that is less saline and warmer water is less dense than cold saline water and this inhibits then the sinking of water masses in the North Atlantic, which is basically one of the drivers of the AMOC. Does the research reveal anything that we should be concerned about? Because change is inevitable, right? Well, I mean, there's this, I guess, by now famous saying that uh, climate has always changed <laughs> for the Earth or on Earth. And that is true, but um, the AMOC has been stable for a very, very long time. And in that sense, we humans are adapted to it, but not what just we humans, like the whole marine ecosystem of the Atlantic is adapted to the current being there. We know if it gets weaker, um, this could enhance the sea level rise at US East Coast cities like New York or Boston. A weaker AMOC is linked to enhanced storminess over the North Atlantic, so this could worsen winter storms for Northwestern Europe. There also seem to be links to the AMOG and the position of weather patterns in the Northern Hemisphere. That's quite a scary set of outcomes, and there are many more unknowns of what will happen if it reaches its tipping point. There are some parts of the climate system that can be fairly stable and behave what we call linearly for a long time period, meaning that if we stop global warming now, the AMOC will likely recover. But once the AMOC has reached or uh, gone beyond its tipping point, then even if we reverse the forcing, it will continue to weaken. And that we know can happen, but the problem is we don't know when exactly it will happen. And that could, if we are unlucky, be really, really close to nowadays, could be a little bit farther away, but we don't know. And as I said, once we cross this tipping point, there is no going back for a very, very long time. I'm not sure whether to be absolutely terrified of our future or um, hopeful that we're aware of this huge um, impact. Oh, I don't know. I mean, basically, um, we are learning and we're learning, I guess, every new things, but um, I guess sometimes, you know, when you know more about a system, you also realize how much there, there is that you still don't know. And it is hopeful in the sense that we do know about it now, and right now is a time where we can still act. Uh, so that is hopeful. But um, the other thing, I guess, would be looking at, okay, how is climate politics right, done right now? And that, at the moment, still doesn't look extremely helpful to me because we're not acting fast enough. So much science in that story. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.